Hey marketing people, I just had a, a good question from Origin Arts, so I thought I'd make a video response. The question goes like this, what is your preferred number of global monthly searches and the number of competitors for each keyword? And that is an excellent question. So seemingly simple question, but it's a little bit of a complex answer. So I'm going to try and take you through this as best as I can here. So let's go look at some real world data from the Google AdWords keyword tool. And in this case, we're going to use dog food as our example. I typed in dog food into the Google keyword tool set to United States, actually. It looks like it's Britain, but it's not United States. And what it tells us is that uh, we have a competition level of medium. And I'll get into what that means in, in a second here. We have a global monthly search volume of 1.5 million, so the whole world searches in Google that, that number of times per month, and the local monthly searches is the country that you're searching from. So in this case, I searched from the United States, and it's telling me that this was 1 million searches. And it also has an estimated cost per click, so if you want to buy clicks from Google through their AdWords campaign, it would cost you $1.35 per click. So now what I've done is I've taken this data and I've dumped it in Excel. So that now we're in Excel here, this is going to help us make a little bit of sense of, of, of this keyword phrase data. So the first thing was the competition. What does that mean? The This has a 0.63 competition, which is a little bit high, not really that high, but I'll give you an example here to help me make sense of this before I, I prattle on. Google says that the most competitive keyword phrase being bid on, and when I say that being bid on, is through the Google AdWords. Those are the ads that show up in the search engine results page. So that would be stuff like stuff like this. This is an ad and this is an ad. These people are paying the top position would be paying $1.35 and it would be descending down. So this guy might be paying a buck, 80 cents, 70 cents, 60 cents, that kind of thing. So that's $1.35 there. Now what this means is those ads that we just saw was the most competitive market on Google would have a one meaning that that market is has a absolute highest number of advertisers doesn't include the price it just means how many people are competing for a particular keyword on the Google AdWords platform so this competition figure really only relates to Google AdWords but where there's high AdWords competition or PPC which is pay-per-click competition we usually see high SEO competition so again dog food 0.63 of the most competitive market out there so there certainly are much more competitive markets. And we can see all of these keyword phrases have their own metric that are attached to that. So attached to this. So the best thing for you to do is treat this data as relative. When you're looking at your phrases, which ones to target, use this competition number as a loose theoretical number to help you understand the competition. And we can see one here, this is quite a bit less at 0.41. So that's a little bit less competition. And we could go through all these phrases looking at that. This will all come to light in a second. Estimated average cost per click, I will get into that in one second. The first thing I want to do though is look at the organic side. So there are 1 million searches per month including organic and non-organic. Um, there are 17 million ranked sites for this keyword phrase. So when we look at the phrase dog food, right here we can see about 17.4 million phrases. So is it going to be practical for you to get into the top 10 here? These are the ads. This is the first organic result. So are you going to be able to beat these 17.4 million people? Even if you can make it to the 17 millionth position, beating 17 million other websites, you're still going to be 400,000 down. And we can see that's a long ways. You're going to be way past here. You're going to be buried in the results. So while this has a very high demand, it has an extremely high competition. And that's where the difficulty lies in trying to get this sorted out. So let's again go and look at a real world example. I like to, I'm going to give you this run through here. Now, that Google, uh, that search phrase that we saw on Google had a million searches a month right here. Now let's assume that we can get the number one position. I would say, based on my experience with what I've seen people ranking, that, you know, theoretically you're going to get 3 to 10% of all the traffic or being number one. And for every position below that number two, I would say you get half of that. And for the position below that, you probably cut it in half again. It's not exactly like that for every market, but I'm just giving you a really loose figure that you can work on. So assuming that we could beat the 17.4 million competitors 
and assuming best case scenario, so I'm, I'm making a very rosy, rosy picture here, assuming that we could get 10% of all the traffic of people searching for it. So again, 1 million people search per month. Google shows us in the search engine results page, we're in the number one organic position. Best case scenario, 10%. That would get us 100,000 click-throughs to our site for the phrase dog food. So this is brutally optimistic. Uh, dog food, I would actually probably slant it more towards the 3%, but I'm just using 10% because it's an easy number to work with. And what's going to dictate how much of that traffic you can actually capture is, is how competitive that market is. The less competition there is, you're probably going to be more on the 10% side. Ultra competitive markets, you know, you're talking 3 2 even 1%. Thousands of people will debate this. Uh, there is no absolute firm answers to this. So again, I'm just trying to give you the theory behind this to help you understand so that when you're doing your market validation, you can make sense of this and sort of give yourself a best case, worst case scenario. So we've assumed that we got 100,000 clicks from a million searches. And if we had, say, a 1% conversion rate, which would mean that for every 100 visitors that come to our site, we make one sale. That's a pretty rough conversion rate. Again, some markets convert higher. A lot of mar uh, markets convert lower. Typically, the more competitive the market is, the more people offering something. You know, a good example of this would be gambling. Gambling has probably one of the worst conversion rates because there's so many sites to choose from regarding gambling. So you have to share your traffic with so many other people. Whereas if uh, you know you're in a market that's much more specific, like you know how to grow herbs that heal eczema much, much more focused market, probably not going to be a lot of competitors in that market, and so that you're going to be able to enjoy a higher conversion rate. So again, for this case, we're going with 1% conversion rate, highly theoretical, but nonetheless, you can use this information to apply to your own markets. So that would get us 1,000 conversions per month. Now, we need to ask ourselves, what is a conversion worth? And if a conversion is only worth a dollar and we make a thousand conversions, we make a thousand dollars that month. Now we need to ask ourselves, is that profitable after paying our web hosting fees and all our time spent? Is this practical for us? If your conversion rate is much higher, maybe you're selling an ebook for $37 on a particular subject, you know, a big chunk of that might be a high a big chunk of that might be profit, right? Because it's an ebook, you're not shipping anything, it's all electronic. Of the $37 value of the book that you're selling, probably $35 of that is pure profit. If you were making a thousand conversions a month and you were you're making 35 bucks a sale, you can do the math. So conversion value X, or sorry, conversion value times the number of sales. So it's just, you know, if our conversion value is ten dollars per conversion and we make ten sales, that's a hundred bucks. So you need to ask yourself what it is do you want from your market? What do you need to justify all of this? And one more component we want to look at is we've talked about the SEO side of things. This is representing the organic side. And you remember I showed you those uh, search results for the for the PPC here. And these people here are paying. These are the ads. They're paying to get me to click on this. So if I was to click on this guy's link, he'd probably be charged about a dollar. According to Google, it would cost you $1.35 approximately to rank in the number one position. So if I go back to having a 1% conversion rate and I'm paying $1.35 per click, it's going to cost me $135 to make that sale. And so you need to ask yourself, is that practical for you to be involved in that? So again, that 1% conversion ratio needs 100 clicks at $1.35, it's $135. And you can do the math here on all of these phrases to get you understanding of what you're getting into. So we look at this competition number. We treat it very loosely, just theoretical. We use these competition numbers to compare our phrases to each other. Global monthly searches, if you sell a global to a global audience, you can look at that. If you're selling to a region like say just the United States, we would look at the local monthly searches. Estimated average cost per click, what it's going to cost us to get in the number one position, so it might be, uh, you know, number three might be only 80 cents, so maybe you don't want to be in the number one, you save yourself 50 cents, and you, you know, you, you're happy with position three or five or something like that. Number of ranked sites, this is very important. Um, it's a little bit more than the number of complex, or sorry, it's, there's a little bit more to this than just the number of sites that are competing for this, but this is a very simple metric that you can use to get yourself started. If you want more information about that, I would certainly be happy to give it to you. So we're, you know, we're, if, let's look at these two. If we compare these two figures here, obviously dog food reviews is going to be a lot easier to tackle. We've only got 155,000 sites that we have to beat. Now even that sounds like a lot, and that's a fairly reasonable number. You know, personally, 
being high, highly theoretical here again, anything with 200, 300,000, I, I consider probably fairly easy to, to rank for. And what is easy? Meaning that, you know, I, it's practical to get it done. There's so many complexities behind this, it's really difficult for me to, to spout this all out in a short video. So I'm trying to keep this short so that people actually watch it. And then, you know, you saw the math there. So, you know, if we can get number one position, top rank for traffic, we would get 3 to 10% of this figure. Right, is that what I was saying there in that in that example? So, I hope that helps you make sense. Unfortunately, this is a dog food example. I don't know what market you're in, Origin Arts. So, if you have a specific subject you want to talk about, I'd be more than happy to take some real life data, show that to you, present it to you, and help you make sense of this market. It's very important that if you're getting into a new market, that you validate your market, that you know there's sufficient demand and there's a sufficient amount of uh, or a reasonable amount of competition, so that you can make your website profitable and if you're new to internet marketing you probably want to start with an, a small market that would be easier to dominate easier to rank for once you can kind of get your toes wet you start learning the basics you can start going to more competitive markets resist the temptation to go to giant markets with high demand and say to yourself oh if I could only get one percent of this giant market now the reason you're not going to get one percent of a giant market is dog food one or 1.5 million global searches per month if you only rank in the 17 millionth position, you're not going to get that 1%. You're probably going to get 0. 0.000, a lot of zeros, 1%, because you're so far down in the results. So you can't, it doesn't work like that. It's not like, you know, the old offline mentality. We're not going to get that 1% of that giant market unless we can start to rank. So if you ask yourself, if I can't rank for something like 17, 17 million competing websites, you're not comfortable with that, you're not going to get that 1%. You're not going to get any of that. So... Very, very important stuff to think about. Um, I hope you found this video response useful. And for everybody else that was watching, uh, thank you for participating. And please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you find this information useful. And, you know, it helps, helps support me and motivate me to continue making these, these videos. So thank you very much. Have a great day.